Hey Hickok45 here, sitting in the woods. I bet it's vlog time, isn't it? Yes, thought we'd chat with you about a few things. Uh, been a little while since we've done a vlog, and we're sitting here on the range, midway between the shooting table and the longest range targets over there in my uh, in the background. But uh, we want to thank everybody for the support. Uh, we've reached a milestone with uh, around 200,000 subscribers. Uh, man, who knew? Well, actually, I knew. I knew three or four years ago that we'd be at 200,000 uh, this month, uh, 2012. But uh, actually, I didn't know, did I? <laughs> I would have guessed 5,000, maybe, if we were lucky. Uh, but anyway, we really appreciate the support, the, the viewership, and, uh, oh, man, the stuff that some of you have sent, uh, the manufacturers have sent. Uh, ammo manufacturers or distributors and holster makers, the, the things that we really need, you know, for the videos. And we have lots of offers to send all sorts of things and gut stuff but that doesn't show up in videos. Uh, but those things that just make it work, like the guns, the ammo, the holsters, you know, that's kind of the, the staple of, uh, of what we do here. Staples of life. Staples of my shooting life. <laughs> but we really appreciate that. You know, we... We, uh, you know, I joke about it. We really, obviously, as I've spoken before to that topic in radio shows, we really totally surprised, you know, all the way uh, through that it's grown this big. We, uh, we had no, no clue, no notion. And, you know, the ironic thing is we didn't even have the desire necessarily. You know, we, we started doing this, uh, hopefully for the same reason that you're doing it, if you're making videos, just because it was fun, because I could because I've been shooting so long and I knew a little bit about photography and, and all that, pull out a pocket camera, take a couple of shots and, you know, a couple of movies of silly stuff. Shooting at a buffalo with this gun, that first video this posted, uh, well, it goes back three or four years. I actually did it longer ago than that. We posted it as, the, I guess, the first video where I just took out my pocket camera, the little uh, cannon, you know, and held it there and, <laughs> and said something about another buffalo and shot the buffalo five times with black powder cartridges with this gun and, uh, and posted the goofy thing. And I guess it was, I don't know, almost a year after that before we really posted any, anything that was worthwhile, you know, necessarily. But, but anyway, hopefully, as I was saying, you're doing the same thing. You're, if you're making videos, it's because you enjoy doing it. That's why we started doing it. And of course, John got home from school and uh, you know started manning the camera, so we got better things. You know, some of those early videos are well, a camera on a tripod, that little cigarette pack size uh, Canon pocket camera, and uh, and so we progressed from there. But again, had no clue. I don't think we even looked at subscribers and views. We did notice that people seemed to like what we were doing, uh, but I don't know. We just, so we just thought of some videos to do and, and kept doing it. We, we thought, I remember us having that conversation. I think I've spoken about this before. Yeah, how many videos could we do? Maybe 15, 16, 18, 20? You know, we could do something on all the lever guns, maybe something on the military guns, something on the old pistols. Yeah, it'd be cool, have it out there. People might enjoy that, get something out of it. <laughs> and we continued to get ideas though and realized we didn't have to get 40 guns out to do a video. And uh, it was, wow. I don't know, eight months, a uh, year later, I don't know, a year later, it was in June, I recall, when I got the email about whether or not we wanted to be a partner. I said, what's that? I didn't know anything about that, you know, with YouTube. So anyway, I tell all that, again, just to emphasize the fact that that uh, we, we just started doing this for fun, really. Uh, same reason I started shooting, because it's fun, and uh, it's, just, it's just grown, and it's because of you all, and we appreciate the fact that, that you all have supported it like you have and continue it. Uh, I mean, the growth is still uh, surprising and, and amazing. You know, hundreds and hundreds of new subscribers every day don't know where they come from. What are they doing right now? They don't know about these videos. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So anyway, it's, a, it's kind of a weird phenomenon to us, but we're enjoying it still. Uh, I mean, it's work to some extent, and we try to, to meet some of your all's uh, requests and you know there's a couple, a lot of things we're juggling but it's still uh, mostly fun really you know it's great john and i get to work together and you know argue together work together play together and <laughs> put these things together and uh, he has to stand a lot of minutes in a row doesn't he 
holding a camera because I just keep on gabbing, keep on shooting. And uh, you don't think about that maybe, but you know, where most of our stuff is not edited, then you know, there's not all these little clips of 13 seconds here and 20 seconds there. And you know, there could be a big break and go get a soft drink and sit down in the shade for a while. You know, so, so it's a little different uh, the way we, we operate, I guess. But anyway, I hope if you're making videos, and you're posting videos, you're, you're doing it because you're really enjoying it and, and you're not doing it to try to, I, I think it can take the fun out of it. And that, that's been the beauty of us and I know we're fortunate, but it, the beauty, part of the beauty has been the fact that we haven't uh, you know, been focused on, oh man, are we ever gonna get to 5,000 subscribers? Or how can we get 2,000 subscribers? How can we get 40,000 subscribers? You know, things just, just, just happen. You know, as we're having fun, you know, so it's that old, that classic situation. Just do what you do. Try to do it well. Do what you want to do, whether it's well or not. Do it the way you want to do it. And then if if people come and watch, fine. If they don't, fine. You know, it's still my attitude. Uh, you see my comments. You know, people will make a comment about you talk too much. Yeah, guess I do. Too bad. Not going to change. You know, I think this is what we do. <laughs> so. Anyway, we, uh, we appreciate you all and uh, I hope that you stay with us because we're going to keep making videos. And I had a couple things to talk about here. I don't want to uh, forget where I was going. I got off a little bit on, uh, on all that, but it's just, it is kind of a milestone. And I know that, uh, that a lot of you are involved in the same endeavor and just want to give you some of my fatherly advice on that. My wisdom from the old guy that make sure you enjoy it. Okay, that's job number one. Enjoy what you're doing. Uh, so it has been about four years. You know, we've been been doing this. Uh, started with that old Colt 45 uh, video, and uh, just took it from there. Uh, all these, uh, I say, relaxed videos. Most of them kind of are, and that's that's been part of the beauty of it. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, since we're kind of at a milestone, and several years really have have lapsed. You know, it's hard to believe we've been doing this so long and this much time has passed. Uh, but I thought it might be a good opportunity to maybe invite some people back that might have come into the channel months ago, years ago, and without meaning to maybe, or maybe with intent, left an obnoxious comment and got blocked. You know. That happens occasionally. I'll occasionally get a message from someone that says, hey, so-and-so wonders why you blocked them. Was it an accident or whatever? And Or the person will write me under a different uh, username and say, I don't understand why you blocked me, Hickok. I, I, I've never left a message or, or I didn't mean anything by, or, or something, you know. And, 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 of course, by then, you know, that's like a thousand messages back or or whatever. And I, don't, I, I couldn't tell you, don't remember the username or what it might even have been. You know, it's been deleted and blocked. Uh, but anyway, so I'll you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, if they're writing me, you know, and, and wanting back in under that username, I figure, well, even if they did say something really obnoxious or obscene and troublesome or whatever, they apparently have seen the light and realized they did it. So, so yeah. But anyway, I thought it might be a good point to grant some amnesty <laughs> to people if there's anybody like that that, that wants back in, you know. Uh, I know. It, the time passes and you, you got to think about someone might have been 14 years old four years ago, three and a half years ago when we started this. They're 17 or 18 years old now maybe. Yeah, we all do crazy things. We say crazy things, uh, you know. And, and, and plus, in some other uh, venues, maybe in, uh, online gaming or other uh, even gun channels, I don't know, maybe some things are more accepted, you know. And people don't realize when they first come in to the Hickok 45 channel that we really do try to keep a sane uh, environment as much as is possible, you know, on the internet. <laughs> um, and, you know, they don't really realize that right away. So they come in with the same language or the same craziness or the same smart aleck attitude. And maybe it's not really them on a good day, but that's just the way they are in other forums or something. I don't know. You know, I don't know what the reason might be. But, but if, if you're out there and you're one of those people, just write me and uh, let me know, hey, yeah, Hickok, you blocked me last year or a couple of years ago. I probably was saying something stupid. Uh, you know, can you unblock me? Yeah, we'll start fresh, okay? 
all of us have to grow up. Uh, there's a maturing process that takes place with most of it. Uh, it's, it's not taking place yet with me. I'm still really immature. <laughs> but uh, most people actually do mature, grow up, uh, or just realize, ah, that's not really appropriate. Or now I see, you know, you go through some of our videos and you kind of get to know us. You get to know most of the viewers and you realize uh, this is not crazy land. At least we try it to keep it from being crazy land. There are some videos, specific videos, <laughs> specific guns, it seems like, uh, that are more likely to have a little crazy land involved in the, in the comments. But for the most part, it's, it's not too crazy, right? So I invite you back, okay? Just let me know and uh, we'll give you another chance. Okay, Not like you're getting uh, to win a new Mercedes or anything, but just, just come on back if you want to. Just let me know. Uh, good time to to bury the hatchet, let's say, and I because I do block, I block and delete. I, I have made that that point several several times. It's not uh, there's no freedom of speech in my living room necessarily. You know, uh, I'm not going to go to your channel and say something obnoxious or cause trouble, and I expect you not to do that on our channel in our living room on our videos necessarily. So I, I don't hesitate to block. And I figure if someone makes some really obnoxious comment, troublesome comment, it's so obvious that they they, they hate what we're doing. They're incredibly envious, jealous, and it's some hate-filled comment or whatever. Well, they're going to make those comments probably on other videos. Yeah, block, delete, go on. But, but really, I do that. I don't hesitate. It's not a, it's not a big deal. I don't lose any sleep over it. Just block and go on. So, uh, for a lot of folks, it's probably takes them a little time to realize uh, the the uh, type of channel we have. So, anyway, enough said on that. Just wanted to mention that. Try to be constructive, you know, instead of destructive. I guess is the bottom line there. Uh, same thing on your own you know, channel, your your movies, your videos that you post. You know, hopefully you're representing the gun community in a positive way as much as possible because it's it's a it's a serious business in terms of the impression we're all creating. Uh, you know, doing this. So even though we're all having fun and we all push it now and then, but uh, by and large, we, we've got to be aware of that because people are watching. People are watching. You know, and plus we never know. You know, it could be that sometimes when we see troublemakers come into our, our uh, video, your videos or my videos, it, it could be forces from the anti-gun world. You know, I mean, that would be more effective than just coming in and posting something stupid or obnoxious uh, to come in and, 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 and use some creativity to try to uh, create, uh, I don't know, uh, a discourse that's unhealthy or something. I don't know. That might be part of their strategy. Who knows? There's some pretty sophisticated, I'm sure, attacks out there. Uh, so anyway, uh, what else do I want to talk about? Since I'm not probably going to do a radio show, let's, uh, this, this week, a couple things I might have talked about in the radio show. Uh, one topic was going to be uh, being a tinkerer, uh, gunsmithing. You know, one of the things that I didn't really start doing until later in in life. Really, I don't know why. I was a little reluctant to take firearms apart and to do any kind of gunsmithing. Now you got to know your limitations. I'm not encouraging you to be, become a gunsmith, get you a sledgehammer and a Dremel and become a gunsmith. Uh, but if you're new to guns, don't be too reluctant to carefully, you know, take them apart. It's just like computer stuff, you know, know where you went, know what you did, back yourself out. If you get to an area where you know you shouldn't be, you're not sure about. Uh, but just notice what part you took off. Don't be afraid. Some people are afraid to even break one down to clean it well. They really are. But look online for directions and instructions about how to to take various firearms apart, it's there on just about every firearm, and look at your manual, and uh, find a good spot to do it. Buy some good screwdrivers, good tools, punches, and things, and don't be afraid to, to tackle a firearm. You, it, it's a, it's almost like reloading. Uh, again, I discovered this late in life, but I, it's a really relaxing endeavor for me to break down. Well, one of these, for example, it was a while before I would do that. But I can uh, I can take one of these apart right down to the last screw now, you know, and spread it out on a table, and make sure it's perfectly clean and oiled, and then put it back together. I really enjoy that uh, almost as much as going out to shoot it. It's just a very relaxing endeavor. Maybe I'll do a video on that. But it's uh, it's something you don't want to just avoid, you know, unless you're maybe a bull in a china shop. I don't know. But 
but uh, don't don't avoid that as long as I did. I think I was really in my 30s before I, I started doing much of that. And then even a little gunsmithing. I take these, for example, you can order uh, stone kits from Peacemaker Specialist, for example, and take one of these that's a little bit rough, like a third generation gun, and go in there and stone some parts and smooth them up and uh, you know make them it's just a better gun you know so I do I do that kind of thing and I'm not a real gunsmith but I I do I do a few things and I know my limitations uh, another thing I was going to talk about is this coin I have here in my hand now I can't show it to you too closely because it has a name on it I was going to tell you this on a radio show but this way I get to show it uh, I'll cover up the name there and kind of kind of show it but this is a, a challenge coin we were at the NRA convention in St. Louis, and it was, you know, obviously, you know, there on the floor of all the exhibits walking around, and it was nice uh, meeting people. People would come up that, that, that recognized us and everything. Well, we were talking with somebody when uh, some people walked by in uniform and then came back, and it was a Navy guy, and he came over to want to shake my hand, and I noticed he had something in his hand as he was talking to me, he was very serious, and he started to reach his hand out, and I thought, okay, what's happening here? Yeah, everything go, goes through your mind in a split second. I thought, he's gonna, it's like the old Three Stooges trick, he's got a buzzer in his hand, <laughs> what's gonna happen here? He wants to shake my hand. And it was this coin, and he left it in my hand. And if you don't know, this is a challenge coin, that uh, it's, it's a military thing, and that uh, there may be other folks that do that, I don't know or use that, but, uh, but it's a, he's in the Navy in St. Louis, and he left this in my hand, and he just, very seriously, I appreciate what you do, I love your videos, and he walked away, yeah. And I knew a little bit about it, but I asked around a little bit more, and as I understand, it's, a, it's quite an honor for someone in the service to give you one of these, and I just, I just thought that was really neat. And uh, I've been meaning to tell that story, because that was you know, back in, what, April, uh, and I, I cherish that. And if he's watching, uh, he knows who he is. I hope, I know who I am. John knows who he is. <laughs> no, this was really quite an honor that he did that and gave me that. And, and plus it was his demeanor. You know, it was, he was just, he was very serious, you know. And, and, uh, and it was, I could tell he was proud to shake my hand. And I'm proud to have that, just to let him know. Cause he just went away. I really didn't have a chance to talk to him. So challenge coin, kind of an interesting, uh, concept and, and honor so i'll always keep that and uh wouldn't let him know i appreciate that what else do i have in my pocket here i was gonna well that speaking of the military i keep forgetting to bring this out uh, and the uh, same thing i cover the name this is this is my dad's uh dog tag you know he wore these through i've got the other one too through uh you know world war ii and that's pretty neat you know having that he survived the war, of course, and, uh, and everything. But uh, the fact that he wore wore these, and I think that's the original chain still, too. Not, not the small one, but I believe that one is. I don't know. But uh, I have those, and I keep them in separate places, locked up. One in the bank vault, uh, or at the bank, in a lockbox, and then and this one in a safe, too, house. But And, uh, in fact, I, I wore this for a long period of time myself. And I got concerned about maybe just losing it, not realizing I had, had lost it. But uh, that's a that's a neat thing to have, uh, knowing where it's been, you know, worn by Dad and all through Europe, and North Africa, and Italy, and through his travels. I have records of where he went uh, that that he has left left me. Uh, but but anyway, that was an interesting experience, of course, for him, a life changing experience. I'm sure something I was going to talk about. I don't think I have in a radio show even. All through my life growing up, there were these army reunions. You know, it was just a part of my my life. And I'm not really an army brat. You know, dad was out of the army before I was born. And, uh, and all that was in his past. Except from his unit, uh, there were probably, I don't know, in the early years, maybe 50 at least, men that would, that would show up every summer Fourth of July weekend uh, in in Tennessee or Kentucky. I think a lot of them were from Tennessee and Kentucky, but not all of them. A lot of them came from the West Coast, the East Coast, from all over the place, 
and but we seem to almost always have it in uh, in this general region. So lots of times it'd be around Knoxville, uh, lots of times up in Kentucky where I'm from, and we'd would have entertain them at our house. We'd have picnics, I recall, out in the yard, and things. That, so as a part of my culture growing up. That's that's as much a part of, of my memory as Christmas and other special occasions. Uh, was all those guys coming every summer, and all you know, it's just an onslaught of guys, you know, and their families coming to the house and gigantic picnics, you know, through the Fourth of July weekend. Got to know them. I could give you names, you know. I remember them to this day, what they looked like, and which ones were avid fishermen. A couple of them shooters. Your things they talk about. You know, uh, just just all their little idiosyncrasies. They were like family, extended family, and uh, but they would meet every year without fail. Uh, and at the time, of course, I didn't understand. You know, when I was eight, five, ten, fifteen, you know, even twenty, probably didn't quite really grasp, you know, the gravity of that. You know, but when you think about it, how they they were all through World War II together. That's that that speaks to the bond that's that's formed there, doesn't it? And I'm sure some of you are involved in those sorts of things. You know that bond much better than I do. I played sports. I, the, I know the the kind of bond you get with that, which would be minor as compared with uh, you know out risking your life, you know, uh, in, in, in battle. So, but that was interesting, uh, an interesting aspect of of my childhood. And the sad part, of course, was. You know, I don't know, when I got to be into my 30s, you know, they, they were especially dying off. And uh, and there'd be, you know, some just wouldn't show up because they were sick or they were they were gone, you know. And it was just that maybe their wives would show up, you know, because it was, these people all got to know each other so well, you know, the spouses and their children and everything. So gradually they, they fell off. And I recall uh, when I got into computers in the early 80s, I would help dad. I, I kept a, I, a database uh, for two or three years, and I think somebody else started doing it. But I put all those. This was early days of computer, and most of those old guys were not into computers. And I had a Macintosh, you know, the year they came out. And I remember putting together on a on a database all the names of of everybody, and then and their basic address and everything. Because that year, I guess Dad was responsible for mailing out the invitations or information or something. Uh, he and my mother. And so I gathered it together and put it on a, a, a computer so that uh, and then printed it out for him so it'd have it, you know, readable and everything, labels, mailing labels, whatever. And I remember that uh, there were there were so many of those that I I had to write deceased on, you know, it was a blank for that. And uh, uh, yeah, I remember doing that that year, thinking, yeah, one well, of these days, you know, that's going to be dead, you know, yeah, and uh, and all on, of course, it is now. But uh, the fact that those guys got together, I mean, right up to where there were, I mean, it really hadn't been all that long ago, you know, well, it has been 20 years, I guess, but because uh, dad's been gone about 18, but but there'd be like a handful of meet still, you know, uh, five, six, seven, eight would meet here in Nashville or up in Kentucky, you know, out of all those, those guys. So they've all, there's probably a couple of them still alive, I don't know, but uh, most of them are gone, of course. So. Anyway, just thought I'd ramble about that. That's the kind of thing I do ramble about in the radio shows. Those of you who, who uh, have listened to some of those, just random topics, things that are uh, uh, interesting to me, maybe interesting to you, maybe not. Or we talk about a firearm or, or, or just whatever. Uh, but anyway, at this point, we thought we'd just talk about some things, uh, kind of let you know where we are, how we got here, some of our thoughts on it, I guess. And, I know I've, I've been a little bit uh, random there and disjointed, but just wanted to talk about uh, uh, some things at the, the 200,000 uh, mark because we never thought that we would get this much uh, much attention or this many views and, and all that sort of thing. And uh, it just, just kind of happened. And uh, we enjoy doing it. And uh, it really started with that old uh, buffalo. Although when I, when I, uh, shot the buffalo if you look at that video uh, I, I when I filmed that I just pulled the camera out you know and just you know, it was a bit goofing around uh, I'm not sure I even knew of YouTube at the time because I did that in the fall or winter and then posted it in July 
you know, it was just something to post. Then we did a couple of corny things after that. You might have seen a few of you shooting through my car, you know, both arrows and uh, and Glock or, and that sort of thing. I, I finally took those down. But uh, then we didn't really do much for about a year because uh, it really wasn't really going. I mean, we just didn't, you know, just didn't do much. Just put a couple of goofy videos up there and let it hang. You know, there was no project going at that point. But, uh, but yeah, that is the, that's the gun that I used. It's a second generation Colt and uh, a really sweet one, <laughs> I'll tell you that. In fact, I need to shoot it, don't I? Let's take a couple shots with this, baby. Make sure it still works. Maybe I should reenact uh, re that video. Hey, look, I know the buffalo. <laughs> Yeah, still shoots. Uh, not black powder in those cartridges, but uh, still works. And that's that's Dad's old holster. <laughs> I couldn't grab uh, my holsters are all in the house locked up, and uh, and uh, this is all I could find out in the shed. This was an old holster he liked. He'd carry around a a, a cowboy style revolver he had, but uh, so I pulled that out uh, today. But anyway, uh, if you've stuck with all this rambling, congratulations. You deserve some kind of medal. Uh, appreciate you watching. Appreciate all the support uh, through the through the years, through the months, and uh, we're we're not going away. We're going to continue doing what we do. We uh, we're appreciative of uh, you all, and like I said, the things that people have done for us. We appreciate the people that blazed the trails. You know, even in, in YouTube, uh, there were people posting things before we did. We got started kind of early, uh, and as I've told you before. I didn't really watch YouTube videos, so I didn't know what people were doing, and that's probably a good thing because that just made it more likely that that I would do whatever I wanted to do. You know, so here we are, and uh, we'll we'll continue having fun. I appreciate you guys. Uh, come visit me on the tube and see what we're up to. Life's good. <laughs>